I were to ask you, how are you feeling today? What would you say? I know I'd answer that question like today or this week. I have felt stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, discouraged, and we see these as difficult emotions, don't we? And I'd love to share with you some things today about how to cope with them, move through them and release them. Um, I would say as well that if you are struggling watching this, um, then please also reach out for some professional help if you need it as well. So I don't think we're taught very well in society how to deal with difficult emotions. And I know in the school that I work in, the, the young people there, they quite often struggle with their emotions and you see this in various different mental health problems. We see it nationally with the mental health statistics, male suicide rates being just one of them. So I'm so passionate about this. I'm sharing my experiences with you as a human who struggles just like you. And yes, our struggles might be different, but as I said, I think our difficult emotions are a shared, shared human experience. Okay, so my first idea, get yourself comfortable, start to write these down. Our first big idea is recognize and label. Recognize the feeling and label it. And so really interesting research was done where people were asked what emotions they felt like daily or regularly, and they came up with happy, sad, and pissed. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone resonates with that, um, but happy, sad and pissed is obviously not a full range of human and emotions and it can help bec to become more granular, i.e. more specific around what we're feeling. Because then that gives us the perspective and space around how to process it and act. So let me give you an example. If someone's feeling angry, then actually if they were to get more specific and unpick that and recognize the different parts, it might be that they are feeling disappointed or scared or um, mistrustful. So you can get a lot, lot more specific in a very, very helpful way. And we tend to use these overarching words like um, some other examples are overwhelm and anxious and stressed. Actually, by applying these umbrella terms, we don't necessarily validate what we're feeling and we don't know how to then act or process on them. So like, I am overwhelmed might actually be I'm emotionally exhausted or I'm physically exhausted. Or it might be that, um, I can't think of anything else, but it can be a myriad of different things. Um, so see if you can get more granular. Can you recognize and label what it is that you are actually feeling? And secondly, create some linguistic and mental space around those emotions. So what I mean by creating linguistic space is rather than saying, I am anxious, you change that narrative to, I notice that I am feeling anxious. And the difference there is it might sound subtle, but it's kind of not because saying I am is an identity. Like I am anxious. Whereas I notice that I am feeling actually separates you from the emotion. And as a meditation teacher, um, I see this a lot in the concept of meditation. So our thoughts and our feelings are like clouds in a sky and we are in fact the sky. So we are endlessly joyful, creative and peaceful as our true nature. And with a meditation practice consistently long term, we don't have to jump into all of those different clouds, which feels frenetic and stressful. <laughs> um, but we can actually start to identify and connect more with the blue sky, which is our true nature. So changing the language around what we use, but also something like a meditation practice is incredibly powerful for opening up space between yourself and your emotions, which then gives you options. It gives you choice. Okay, number three, our emotions are there for a reason. They're there to guide us. And um, this term that comes up in the literature and the research is, is signposting. So our emotions, they signpost our values. And let me give you some examples. So if you feel angry, say in the workplace or at things happening in the news, it might be one of our values is a sense of, of justice. Um, if we feel lonely or grief, then that signposts a desire to love. 
And I think a lot of this stuff around emotions can feel very complex, can't it? Like, in the moment when we feel the emotion, this idea that we need to write, recognise it, label it, create the space, then think about signposting. But if you imagine a bit like driving a car, like when you first got in a car, that was really complicated, wasn't it? There was like loads of different processes. Over time, these processes can become more automatic. So actually you don't need to think about, oh, I need to create space, how do I create space? That starts to be inbuilt in the way that you process emotions. So don't worry, this doesn't have to be complicated. The getting started is the toughest bit. So signposting, what do our emotions tell us? So rather than when we have a difficult emotion, like imagine a page, rather than writing it down and then turning over and flipping straight to, oh, what's the positive side on it? What am I feeling grateful for? Staying on that same side of, with the overwhelm, the disappointment, the grief, whatever it is, um, what does that signpost for us? What does that tell us about ourselves? Next one um, is focusing on the physical sensation. And for me, this is this is quite powerful, it links into what I was talking about last week about stress cycles, so go check out that video if you haven't. But sometimes we can get stuck in an emotion versus releasing it. And please remember that as I talk about this as well, like you don't need to fix your negative emotions or your difficult emotions. Like feelings and emotions aren't necessarily positive and negative. Like those two camps are a bit black and white, um, but we can have difficult emotions and they don't need to be um, fixed. We're not trying to eliminate them from our lives. They are part of human experience. So sometimes I feel like we're afraid if we feel sad or if we feel lonely. Um, if you were to lean into that emotion, people think that they're not gonna stop. Like if, they're, if they start crying, then it won't end. If they start to lean into the discomfort, the grief, the loneliness, then it won't end. They won't ever see the other side of the tunnel. But actually, emotions do have a beginning, a middle and an end. And therefore, being aware of the thoughts that are feeding that emotion. So if I start crying because I'm stressed about something, I can feed that crying the stressful thoughts and I can propagate that. I can stay stuck in the tunnel of that emotion or I could focus on the physical sensation of crying, like the tears running down my face, the, the raised temperature, um, the erratic breathing, whatever the physical sensation is, and focus on that, because then that crying or whatever it is can help release that emotion, and there is another side. If you don't feed the stressful thoughts into that emotion, then it doesn't propagate. And that's not again with the point of fixing it. <laughs> so crying and releasing that and focus on the physical sensation and stopping crying doesn't fix the emotion. That's not the point. It's sitting in it, it's learning to sit in it. Because when we can feel the pain, the grief, the tragedy, the messiness of, feel of being alive and being human, we can therefore also feel the joy we can feel the utter miracle joy that is life we get to feel the positive stuff too and most of us we numb pain in whatever way that is like a lot of us engage in numbing behaviors and I see it sometimes for myself who's scrolling through social media, anyone else? Um, but things like social media, um, shopping, eating alcohol, drugs, TV, all of these ways to, we get very adept, consciously or subconsciously, at numbing how we feel. And the problem is when we numb the pain, we also numb the joy. So the, the goal is not to always feel positive and happy. The goal is to feel both. <laughs> the goal is to feel the whole spectrum of emotions. So my final like thing of this piece of advice from the heart is to embrace the mess, the tragedy, the struggle. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard these ideas, these ideas around difficult emotions, the statistics on mental health, my own personal experience, like, it feels shit. <laughs> um, embrace the mess, the tragedy and the struggle because remembering that all the way through that, you are still enough. 
you are whole. No matter what you feel or don't feel, you are enough.